G'day. One of the various measuring tricks I have around the place is uh, this thing. It's a, a Starrett uh, multi-anvil micrometer. Um, people like uh, Mitotoyo also make them, uh, a few others probably. But uh, I was having a discussion with uh, another YouTube machinist and I had an idea that, well, maybe if I made up a little cranked anvil, this could be more useful because I could measure things right off the deck. And so I did. Uh, and this is the uh, the story of um, how I did it. Um, not not terribly difficult, but it does use a surface grinder and a few other odds and sods. So that's today's clip. I started off with some round stock. I squared it up to my my finished dimensions plus a little bit for for grinding. This is one of those parts where it's it's easier to make two bits uh, rather than try and do one. It gives you a bit more to hang on to and also gives you a spare. Um, what I'm now going to do is, is, is put a bit of an angle on there to give me a sort of a uniform thickness and that'll help with my uh, heat treatment. So it's something I don't particularly want to do but I've actually cantered the head over by the, the angle which I think is, is about, around about 13 degrees and I can then put a cutter in there and use that just to um, trim those out and flip that over and so on uh, to get the angle right. To put this in the vise I haven't got a parallel that's, which is tall enough to, to grip just the very end of that and so what I've done is my old trick of, of using a, uh, a round pin to hold that up and that'll just sit in there like so uh, and that just gives me enough clearance over the vise there that I can come in and take those corners off. There's my part, I've just taken a little bit off there so that I get a more even thickness when I uh, heat it and uh, quench it. Uh, that's going to be ground down anyway so it, it won't matter too much. The downside to tilting the head like this, of course, is I have to retram the head. Um, now, it's got a, a angular scale on there, so you're meant to move it, but uh, like most people, I'm a bit lazy and I don't like uh, touching if I don't have to. However, I found the easiest way to tram these things is actually with a, um, a back plunger indicator. This is a Starrett 196, and it actually comes with most of these bits and pieces that I had to make. Um, but you can see that when you rotate the spindle around, you can see the dial all the way around. Now I've seen arrangements with two dial indicators, I've seen arrangements with dial indicators and you hold a mirror up and all that sort of thing. This is far the easiest way I've found of doing it. Um, these things have been around quite some time and uh, if you look on eBay or something like that, you'll, you'll probably find um, these indicators out there, sometimes in a set, sometimes by themselves. But uh, they're certainly a, a great help when you have to tram a, a mill back. This is the micrometer that this is uh, this device is destined for. Uh, this one's a Starrett, uh, and they call them multi-anvil uh, micrometers and all that sort of thing. And the reason for that is you can unscrew that and put in a different style of, of um, anvil. And so I'm going to be doing that. The next thing I'm going to be doing is marking out the curves on the ends here, cutting that in half, curving those, and then I'll be heat treating. Uh, and I'm, I'm just marking out and curving because it's easy to do that on softer material and then finish it up rather than try and do it the other way around. Those of you who did technical drawing uh, pre-CAD may recognise this. Uh, this is a, um, a drawing circle template or circle template for drawing and uh, I don't use it for technical drawing anymore but I find it is really handy. Um, you, you blew up the part and then you can just put the circle on top, scribe round and you've got your circle marked and I'm just trying to find centres and all that sort of thing. So if you happen to see one of these sitting in a jumble sale or something like that, um, I'd say by all means grab it because they are handy in the shed.
this is my surface grinder it's a 19 oh, 1950s I think um, power surface grinder he was a Czechoslovakian I think in, uh, immigrant who came to Australia and uh, built a range of, of grinders this is just a baby one it's manual feed in all directions it's only got a, like a 4 by uh, 8 inch chuck or something like that 4 by 7 um, but it, it does the job now on here I've got a little magnetic uh, transfer block and so what I'm going to do now is grind the sides of this and so I'll have it up like that uh, and like that to do this face flip it over and so and then the final ones will be and this is why I wanted to get that angle machined on there as much as anything else like that I don't know how well that'll work but ah, it's fun trying these things um, the ends I'll, I'll just have to, to do with some wet and dry or some emery or something like that I think I've already done the sides uh, they cleaned up nicely so that's now quarter of an inch uh, minus nothing plus one thou the magnetic chuck on this grinder has, has got a, a, a large or coarse pitch to the uh, the chuck. These are only small parts and so they sit, fit between the poles. Now I can fool myself and say well I've got a fine pitched uh, transfer block here but that doesn't really cut it um, the way the magnetic field works. So what I'm going to do is get a couple of scrap bits of, of steel here and actually sandwich them either side like that and so what I'm hoping will happen is that they will provide enough support I need to flatten that out I think a bit but they will provide enough support and grip so that the thing can't shoot off sideways um, it's a plan I'm going to try it and see what happens so these are my efforts so far I've ground that surface and that surface and that surface I've come in and I sat those on the edge of the chuck as I suggested I was going to do and I've managed to grind that surface and then turn that over and grind that surface so the only one left to do is that now I want that to be precisely a quarter of an inch below that I mean it, in in real terms it doesn't matter because I could adjust the micrometer or, or make some sort of allowance for that but I'd, it'd be really nice if I if I could get that caught a uh, spot on now one of the interesting tricks with these micrometers is that you can put all sorts of anvils in there and there's a round bar and there's a, a flat and this one will go in like that but if you take that right out as you can see it's a long screw there we go you also have a depth mic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that up and then I'm going to put a quarter inch ball bearing on there and that will mean that effectively if that's a quarter inch down when I get down to wherever the zero point is at the side um, whenever I get down to zero that's going to tell me and that and that will also help me work out okay how much do I need to take off that face this is my final grinding setup because I want to get this face and this face parallel and a precise distance apart what I've done is I've stuck that the bottom face there to my uh, transfer block I've put my steel keepers there they seem to work quite nicely I've now just given that a bit of a grind I'm going to measure that uh, with a depth mic and then I'll work out how far that has to come down to get to my quarter inch and, and I think it's about one and a half thou so I'll, I'll just grind away and see how that comes out there's a little bit of a dish in that anyway so I'm not I'm not sorry to have to grind that out and I may even if, if I don't quite get clean up on that come back and grind that a little bit more um, you know it's only a thou or two but it's something I'd like to eliminate if I can once I've done that I can then come around with some uh, some wet and dry or some emery or something and give the edges a bit of a polish and everything will be wonderful so there's the finished part um, I've, uh, I've checked that with a, a depth mic and uh, I'm, I'm tolerably close I, I think I'm uh, a fraction of a thou out but this one doesn't read to tenths so I can't tell much more than it's not quite on the line but uh, it's it's there I need to polish up the ends a little bit but uh, apart from that it's all good uh, I fitted the other one of the pair that I made up in here in a, in a 
uh, in the uh, the micrometer and uh, it looks like I'm about half a thou out now that could be to the to the blue tack uh, I wouldn't put it past it so uh, I just need to, to, to bear in mind that I'm, I'm that far out um, the nice the nice thing here is that the back of that anvil is the, the deepest thing there and that's only 2.4 a little bit less than 2.4 millimeters thick which means that if I've got something um, like on the ch chuck of a lathe that I want to measure and get the thickness of um, I can actually squeak that in there and measure that um, previously if you think about a standard micrometer you know you've, you've got something like six eight millimeters worth of of anvil plus bow to uh, to measure so I, I think this is a, a great thing uh, but uh, time will tell so thanks for watching hope this is a bit of interest and uh, inspires people to make their own bits and pieces